Alright guys, so I guess this is the first time in a long time that I have stopped to record one of these. So today I want to talk about the Balkans weapon mod, um, just to kind of help me ease me back into the tutorials maybe. And so the Balkans weapon mod is a really nifty mod that applies a whole bunch of new weapons to the game, and basically I'm just going to go quick through all of them and explain what they do. So the first weapon we're going to start with is the spear. And I, as you know, am a really big fan of using the Not Enough Items interface. And before we get into it, I just want to mention this. So here's this button. Bam. Sort key. The default is R. I highly recommend you change it to something that is not R because it really screws up your inventory. So I'm going to look for the spear. Spear. I'm just going to make iron tools of everything. So I hover over it, hit my R button. Lay it on the crafting table. Bam, bam, bam. I have a spear. So, spear, iron spear, does seven damage, which is three and a half hearts. And so this is a cool weapon, so I have my convenient little zombie spawner here to help facilitate this tutorial. And if I could click these guys, so I can click this zombie. He's got a lot of health, so he lives. And there's nothing really fascinating about the melee attack on the spear. But if I right click with the spear, I can throw it. And since I'm in creative mode, I actually get my spear back, which is not what I want. So you can throw your spear, you can pick it up, this does damage to it as if you were meleeing them. And you can make these out of wood, you can make all of the Balkan weapons out of wood basically. And it's just a convenient, cheap, easy, long-range weapon at the beginning of the game. Um, for comparison, we'll just make a quick sword and see what kind of damage that does. So that spear, if someone was counting, took four hits to kill a zombie, I think. We'll try you. One, two, three, four. So it took four hits to kill him with a sword, so comparable damage to a sword. Uses half the material, so spear over sword, I would say yes. Next weapon, we have my favorite, which is going to be the halberd. So halberds are expensive. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. They cost three of this material here. Um, please note that you can only make these weapons out of the vanilla crafting materials so you can't make sapphire or ruby weapons from these. So Halbert has two modes, right click to switch between them. This is stabby mode, notice how this pointy end is out on the tip. And we have slashing mode, which kind of makes it look like an axe. So slashing mode, I'm going to hit this zombie. Look how far back he flies. They fly so far, good zombie. Then I have stabby mode, which does bonus damage. So I'm just going to kill off all my zombies quick and... We'll go in here and we'll just... Oh! Notice how I can jump attack to crit. Uh, I've made a bad decision here since I do not have an exit strategy. Bam! So I really like the halberd. It does immense damage. So the iron halberd does 9 damage, which is 2 more damage than the spear. It has the high damage potential on the stab attack. And the slash attack has the knockback. So knockback, great for smacking away creatures. And creepers. The And we're just going to continue on. So after the halberd, we have the knife. So can I F E? Knife, really easy. You can make this in your regular inventory. So bam. Bam, the knife is a lot like a spear. So it does not do nearly as much damage. It only does... I lied, it does the exact same amount of damage as a spear. It has a much shorter range than the spear, allegedly. I don't actually see it. And you can also throw your knife. Bam! And then you can pick it up. Throw your knife again. Feel like a bamf. Uh, knife is also a crafting ingredient for another Balkan weapon that we'll get to later. So next you have the Battle Axe. I'm just gonna heal myself using cheat mode. So I don't use the battle axe, but it does exist. 
it uses up five material here, so I wouldn't necessarily make an iron battle axe. And battle axes are cool because they work like normal axes, so you can pick up wood items with them faster. Uh, it does use its material. And you can block with it like a sword, and you can also just, you know, stab people with it. It does less damage than the halberd and the spear. But it does the same damage as a sword. So, pretty straightforward item. It has a lot of um, durability, though. So you can swing it 250 times for an iron one before it breaks. Which I believe is twice the durability of a regular iron sword. And it has a lot of knockback on it. Next we have the Warhammer. So, bam, that's not ex all what I wanted to do. It takes four iron instead of five, so better than Battle Axe. Still not as good a trade as the Halberd. Halberd does nine hearts of damage, this does eight hearts of damage. But this has an AoE on it. So if you hold down your right click, you start to charge it. You are walking through that wall. And boom! Tons of damage. But the um, AoE attack on it does have a cooldown. But very useful. So, Warhammers are nice. They're okay. I don't use them, but I can see a lot of value in them. Next we have the Flail. So Flail requires strength. And I've actually never used one of these before, so this will be a first time for both of us. But the way they work is you hold right click and Allegedly, this swings it around me, but they can still hit me from back there, so... I can't honestly say I know what this does. Right-click to throw it, the ball will follow you wherever you go. Right-clicking it again will swing it. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I can't be more informative than this. So that's the flail. I don't know if I can, like... Melee people with it. Anyway, 0 out of 10 would recommend. And so that's all your classic melee weapons. Next you have some ranged weapons. So you have the javelin. Which is just made out of flint. So These stack like arrows. And they work like arrows. You just right click. And then you throw it. It even looks like an arrow. Uh, if you miss... You can get it back. If you hit someone, you cannot get your javelin back. And like any weapon you or item, you can smack with it, but it doesn't do bonus damage. Next we have dynamite, which I did not build this room to work with dynamite. So, dynamite, bam, bam, requires two gunpowder and a string. And I'm really going to regret this, but I'm going to throw it. Turn on creative mode, because it'll break my wall. You guys, stay in there. And so dynamite explodes just like normal stuff. Um, like a creeper, kind of. It does a lot of damage. It's kind of cool. So... I wouldn't recommend it. It's a kind of a waste of dynamite, in my opinion. But what do I know? And then, next we have the boomerang. So I don't use boomerangs, but they're kind of cool. They come back to you, obviously, the boomerangs. And let's, let's see. My friend Anthony really likes these. He hasn't joined us in a while. But notice that even after it hits something, it comes back. But do you notice that it's also only hitting one thing. 
So you just right-click to charge to throw it. That's it. Different boomerangs do different amounts of damage. Higher tier boomerang, you know, like wood, stone, iron, diamond, do more damage. Uh, next we have my second personal favorite item, the musket. So this is a complicated item to make. I like the musket with a bayonet, which is an iron knife and a musket. And so the musket is made from this gun stock and this musket barrel, which is three iron and flint and steel, which is this and this, so that's four iron and a flint. Um, I don't have a flint available. So, bam, 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 flint, bam, 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 bam. Bam, and then the musket stock, which I totally forget how to make because I don't play jacket anymore. Is this? And then we just combine these to get our musket. And I, I like to add the bayonet because it makes the melee attack on this do bonus damage. So knife plus musket gives you musket with bayonet. And so we'll just quick look at the damage numbers on this. So. A stab does three and a half hearts of damage, whereas if you shoot someone with this, it does ten hearts of damage. And please keep in mind that this is for this version of Balkan's weapon mod. In newer versions of Balkan weapons mod, they really tone down the damage on the bayonet. So if you're playing Beat the Beast or um, maybe regular Tekkit even, they've really reduced the damage on this. The last thing you need for your musket are these musket rounds, because you can't shoot nothing. So, we'll put down eight of these, eight gunpowder, and then eight iron ingots, and that'll make 64 of these. So, hold down to load your gun, and then if you keep holding, it'll charge it and aim it. So now I'm ready to shoot. If I let go, it fires. It does a lot of damage. I use this in the nether to kill um, ghasts. Uh, the projectile does have a travel time on it, so it's not instant, but it is pretty fast. Sometimes when you shoot gas, you'll notice it'll hit their fireball back at them instead of hitting them. That's fine, it kills them anyways. So other thing is you can switch weapons while you're holding it after you charge it, and it stays charged. So it's ready to fire. You can just fire again. You can walk up here and kill zombies with it. All in all, a really powerful weapon. I love it. Uh, next you have your crossbow. So, crossbow, bam. This requires a regular bow. So, I don't like this because I don't like ranged weapons that have string in them. Because sometimes you don't have enough string. But, this also uses up a lot of iron, a lot of wood. Granted, it's the same amount of iron as the, um, the other thing. Alright, so we need feathers for this. I've never used a crossbow before, so this will be a learning experience for both of us. Got 12 of these. We take it out. We load it. We prepare to fire it. We shoot a zombie. We load it. We prepare to fire it. We shoot a zombie. So, in terms of damage, crossbow bolt does 17 damage, which is 8.5 hearts. So that's 3 less damage than the musket. Next we have the blowgun. Uh, so blowguns are cool, they're just made from sugarcane. I'm just going to give myself this. And you need darts for this. And the darts are the hard part, they require cactus. And the way these work is, I believe they do poison damage. So they load just like everything else. They stay loaded just like the musket. You fire it. Uh, these guys are low HP, but notice that now one of these zombies is poison. You can see the poison effect on him. And I'm not sure if you can kill people with the poison. But you can get them really low and then smack them. So it does 2 damage on impact, and it inflicts 1 damage per second for 5 seconds. But it won't kill them, it'll just leave them at 1 HP. So then you can just find the zombies and smack them and hope they die. I want to smack this guy. Yeah. 
And then our final ranged weapon, everyone's favorite, the blunderbuss slash shotgun. Just gonna clear up some inventory here. So the blunderbuss is made in basically the same way as the musket. You need a gun stock. And the blunderbuss barrel, which uses a little bit more iron. But so you make that, you need blunderbuss shot, which uses gravel instead of iron, so it's a cheaper shot instead of the, um, the muskets. The caveat is that this does damage based on range. So what it does is it shoots 10 little projectiles in a spread, and each projectile does 4 damage. So theoretically if you hit an enemy with all of them, it'll do 40 damage, which is 20 hearts. So you can do a lot of damage with this, but the spread is, well, we'll see. So if I stand back here, I hit a whole bunch of zombies. I move up here. Hit one zombie. And I notice that some of them live, so this is a nifty gun. I'm I'm more of a sharpshooter, so I like the bayonet with musket, but it's all personal choice from here. So there's only a few more weapons in the Balkan mod that I want to talk about. The next one is the fire rod. So this guy, two sticks and a torch, unbelievably cheap, and also just plain funny. So notice I've got this little fire effect in my screen, I melee someone, I light them on fire, I break my rod. But frankly this is really powerful, and you can use this to cook food too which if you like to spend, what is it, it's four torches per coal. So if you cook food in the furnace, you would get eight food per coal, whereas with this you'd get four, but your food comes pre cooked, which is nice. Um, there's also the cannon. I've not had much luck with the cannon. I don't like the cannon, I've never really found it useful. So I'm sorry, I will not be showing you the cannon today. Um, the other weapons I wanted to point out. So the weapons I showed you use iron. You can obviously make them with wood, stone, or diamond. The exception being the blunderbuss, the musket, and the crossbow. They can only be made with iron. Um, I also wanted to talk about sapphire weapons and gem weapons. So any vanilla weapon you can make out of sapphires. So this is equivalent to an iron weapon, but it doesn't use iron. You can also make iron tools this way. So you can make iron hoe, iron pickaxe, or sapphire pickaxe. And that's a good way to not use up your iron supply, since if you're playing Tekken, you need that iron to make solar panels or whatever industrial craft items you need. So hoarding iron, always a great idea. The exception that I make is for halberds. So I really like halberds. I will make iron and halberds for mid-game before I have a nano saber. And we'll get to what a nano saber is in just a second. The other thing are bronze weapons. So you can also make bronze tools. They're similar to iron tools, they're just made out of bronze instead of iron. But in light of having sapphires and these other gems, whose only purpose is to supplement iron, I would use sapphires, green sapphires, and rubies over bronze. So the last weapon I want to bring up is the nano saber. The nano saber is really powerful, but the only catch is, is that it requires glowstone, so you have to go into the net of glowstone. And then it has these advanced alloys and carbon plates. And so I just wanted to show you how to make these quickly. And unfortunately I did not make a macerator, which is a big problem. So the way you get this item is you need coal dust. So I'm just gonna give myself eight of these. But you make coal dust by just putting it into a macerator. Or putting coal into a macerator. Not charcoal, just coal and it'll give you back one-to-one -one coal dust. And then you take your coal dust, you need to make coal balls. 
So raw carbon fibers, bam, bam. You take the raw carbon fiber, you compress these. Maybe I'm lying, maybe you drag. So you make these raw carbon meshes, and that's going to throw off my nano saber. So basically, we need these advanced alloys, which are I lied. We need these carbon plates, which are made from carbon meshes, which are made from carbon fibers, which are made from coal dust. So we need coal dust, carbon fiber, blah blah blah. And these advanced metal alloys are made from these mixed metal ingots, and this energy crystal is made from diamond and redstone. So that's how you make one carb raw carbon mesh. We're going to make two of them, so I'm just going to cheat myself another one. <sighs> and then we will make these um, mixed metal ingots. So these are one, two, three. One, two, three. These are refined iron, bronze, tin, bam, bam, bam. Compress. I'm using a singularity compressor to get this fast. And now we're almost ready. We just need the energy crystal. So diamond surrounded by redstone. And I don't think this needs to be charged. So let these go up here. Did I forget something? I never compressed these, did I? Nope. Alright. Now we assemble it. Bam, 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 and bam. So this is a nano saber. Uh, it doesn't have any power in it yet, so we're just going to charge it in our bat box. Except we can't. So, how do you charge things? Charging table. this with the power line and see if this works. There we go, we've got power here, so now we can charge our nano saber. Bam. Notice how much energy this takes up. This takes up a lot of EU for my poor little bat box here. And that's good. So the nano saber is really awesome right click to turn it on. Notice that when it's on, it's draining power and it's draining fast. So you don't want your nano saber on when you're not using it. So your nano saber is A, rechargeable, which is why I really like it, and B, it's really powerful. You can two hit zombies with it. If you crit them, it's a KO. And now I'm out of electrical juice. So I put it back on the charger. That's the nano saber. That's Falcon's weapon mod. That's Sapphire weapons. And that's all I've got for you guys today. So, I hope that was informative. I hope it didn't go too fast. I kind of just nailed through the wiki on this one, to be honest. Um, the tech at light .com has great resources on these weapons and how to use them and their exact damage numbers if you want to go there. Um, and sentiments. I like the halberd. I like the musket. And I love the nano saber. So once I can build a nano saber and keep it charged all the time, I will do that. And you can also bring with you these bat packs. So this little bat pack carries 60,000 EU. If I equip this and I turn on my nano saber, um, hypothetically it should draw a charge from it, but it's not. But. Anyways, I thought I'd be cool there and it didn't work. So, have fun.